Hi, my name is Owen Barnes and I'm a member of DS21 at the Data School. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the index function alongside a top end parameter to dynamically filter whatever is in your view. To understand how the index function is working, let's just build out a simple table. From our data pane, let's drag order date onto rows and let's just expand this by clicking on the plus twice. And now we have year, quarter and month. But let's just remove quarter by dragging it away from the row shelf. We now have a simple table showing us all of the months in each year. And the way that we can understand how index is working is we just want to create a quick calculated field by on the data pane clicking create calculated field and let's just call this index. And all we need to do is just reference the index function which is a table calculation shown here. If we just drag this from the data pane onto our rows, it's going to change the view because index by default is continuous. But if we just click on the drop down here and we press discrete, we now can see that each individual month in each year is assigned a row value. For example, January is one and then at the bottom, December 2020 is going to be 48. But what if we wanted to set this up in a way that allows us to restart our indexing at each year. The way that we can do this is by manually configuring our table calculation. So on the row shelf, if we just click index and we edit our table calculation, we can now understand that it's been computed down the table, but we want it to restart at each year and we want it to compute by the months. So if we click on specific dimensions and we just untick year of order date, that's now gonna reset the index at each new year. If we just exit this here, we can now begin to build out our table a bit more and maybe we want to bring in a measure such as the sum of sales. So if we drag that from the data pane onto columns, we now see that the view, the indexing hasn't changed. However, we now have our sum of sales next to it in a bar format. And one thing I want you to just pay attention to here is notice how index, the values don't change even if I do sort by the sum of sales. So if I just click on the sort button here, we can see that indexing hasn't changed. However, September has now moved to the top in 2017. And this can be quite useful if we'd like to use it alongside a top end parameter. So we can only show the top five index values in each year. And the way that we can do that is we first need to just create a parameter. So on the data pane, click the drop down and create a parameter. And let's call this top n. And we want to set this data type to an integer and let's set the current value to five and let's allow our user to select between one and ten. And now if I just show this parameter, nothing in the view is going to change because we haven't linked our index function to this parameter yet. But the way that we can do this is just by creating another calculated field. So on the data pane, click create calculated field and let's call this our top n filter. And the way that we want to set this up is we want to say, is our index less than or equal to the top n itself? So for example, now we want to say, is our index less than seven? In this case, we'd return all of the values that have a value assigned to it of seven or less. So September, November, December, March, June, July, and October. And all we need to do here is we need to just say, is our index field less than or equal to top n. And then if we select OK, we now have a Boolean and we can now drag this and use it in our filter shelf. So if I drag this from the data pane onto the filters and I select true, it's now only going to show us the first seven values for each year. And this can then dynamically be changed. So if I want to only show the top five, it changes the view accordingly. I hope this video has been useful for understanding how we can use indexing alongside a top end parameter to filter our view dynamically. If you'd like to learn more about table calculations, check out one of my previous videos, which shows you how to use table calculations to show a dotted indicator showing previous month change.